Hello, friends, and welcome to a continuation of our discussion in the book of Genesis. Um, today, we shall be looking at an interesting topic, um, Jacob the Supplanter. Uh, but before we get into it, um, I would love to give us a brief background about what we have been learning throughout this series. Um, you know, focusing on Genesis. We have dealt with the creation, and we have established the fact that God indeed created, and in the process, you know, sin entered this earth, and man fell, and after which we saw uh, Cain and his legacy, which was as a result of sin. As sin continues to rage on this earth, we experienced the flood, which was also a judgment that was brought to man. Uh, but that judgment depicted two things um, for man to take responsibility. But beyond that, God also, you know, uh, demonstrated, you know, the plan of salvation to save us. And we moved on to all nations and Babel. Now, man continues to see that we are in danger. So man thought to himself, but I think I need to do something to save myself. And that was where the idea came from to actually build a Torah. And even, even in the process of building the Torah, uh, man did not succeed. God had to come down to still rescue us. And then we dealt with the narrative about the roots of Abraham. Um, we've also, you know, talked about the covenant. Man and God had a contract, and this man was Abraham that God had that covenant and agreement with, and he promised him a child, which was Isaac, and we dealt with the promise. Now, after, you know, God gave, um, God fulfilled this promise by giving Abraham and Sarah, his wife, the, the son um, called Isaac, today, we are going to be looking at after they had been through that test, which, you know, shook both of them. But yet God showed um, Abraham that because you obeyed me, I am going to, you know, send you, um, you know, a lamb. And the lamb which also represented um, the Savior, which is Jesus Christ. And as I said, we're looking at Jacob today, the supplanter. Isaac had two twins. I mean, he had twins, actually. That's Jacob and Esau. And we'll see how uh, the plan of sal salvation continues, you know, in the lives of these two people. And so with me to discuss this topic today, I do have on my right um, Pastor James. The Lord bless you, our viewers. And on my left, I do have Dr. Ekele uh, Wanko. Yes. God bless you all, viewers. Thank you very much. And so uh, before we really delve into the discussion proper, let us invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to ask you, Dr. Ekele, to pray for us, please. <sighs> Precious Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. Thank you for giving us your Bible so that we can know your will in this earth, how you dealt with people in the past, how you are revealing yourself to us in the present, and what is going to happen in the future. So thank you. And as we discuss this thing today, let us speak what's that will edify you, O oh Father, and not ourselves. And let that everybody who hears this will have a take home that will prepare them for eternal life. That is our prayer in, and ourselves too. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you very much. All right. So um, I'm going to start with you, you know, Pastor. Um, as I mentioned earlier on in my introduction, now we have... Uh, twins. These twins uh, were the sons of Jacob. That is the center of our discussion today. 
And I want us to, I want you to talk about the comparison between Esau and Jacob, these two twins, who we are completely different. Now, what can we learn about, you know, their personalities and their character? Okay, thank you. Actually, I want to start by saying that these two people, Esau and Jacob, the two sons of Isaac, were uh, children of the promise. Because last week we discussed about the, uh, the blessings that the family of Rachel gave her before she left, and um, that blessing they conferred on her now has come to friction. The Lord has blessed her with Esau, the first son, and then Jacob, the second son. By the special grace of God, both of them were growing together in that home, and um, a time came that what the Lord wants them to be must surely be fulfilled. And believe me, there is what God wants us to be. Absolutely. God created us for reasons and purposes. He did not just create us. So here, um, permit me to say that Esau, in his personality and character, was a seller. He decided to sell his birthright. Mm. That is why I say he's a seller. Okay. <laughs> and then Jacob, a buyer. <laughs> yeah. Why did I say this? The birthright in the culture of the Israelites was held so um, highly that people never played with it. But in the case of Esau, he played with that position of being the first son mm -hmm. because of a little thing. Just because he was hungry. So in our own time, he couldn't fast. He couldn't stay a while waiting for what the Lord has prepared for him to come true. He couldn't fast to wait for the Lord. So just because of, the Bible said, a plate of stew, he sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking me, what can we learn from their characters? In the life of Esau, before I tell us what I think about Jacob, in the life of Esau, how it affects us today, we all are sons and daughters of God. In fact, God does not have a second son or a second daughter. If you are a son of God, you are just a son of God. And our birthright is to inherit the kingdom of God. In this case, it could be believed that if we decide to tow the way of Esau, we sell our birthright, we sell um, what God has prepared for us with little things that could be the sin of adultery, that could be you know, stealing, that could be telling lies, little things, losing our integrity mm -hmm. as he lost his integrity because of a plate of food. Mm. So that is why I said he's a seller. In the same way, we can sell our birthright mm -hmm. with little, little sins. Things that we can, you know, things we can overcome. And then in the side, on the side of um, Jacob, Jacob was very smart. But do I say that as a buyer, a smart buyer, that his smartness was a little bit on the negative? Mm. You may ask why did I say a little bit? Um, though time may not allow me to portray it the reason why I said a little bit, because we have to also know that everything that is happening here, God is aware of it, mm -hmm. considering what happened before they were born. Mm -hmm. But here, Jacob could not as well, you know, wait for God's will to come the way he has planned it. Mm -hmm. Like every other one could see, he was like trying to use his shortcut way to get what the Lord has prepared for him. So most times it's not good to 
and for us to get what we think belongs to us in a shortcut way. Mm -hmm. We still have to follow the due process. Right. We should not supplant in order to get what we need. So in the case of um, Jacob, the Bible said he was a supplanter. Right. And he supplanted his brother. Look at he said to him, when he saw that his brother was hungry and said, please give me food before I die because I am very weary. He said, okay, give me your best rights. Mm -hmm. Then I will give you food. So it means he, he never loved his brother very well. Mm -hmm. He was envious of his brother's headship in the family. Right. He was envious of that position. That was why. So most times, if we have um, lived a life of envy, the Bible has warned that is bad. Mm -hmm. So in these two people, their personality and character, I can say that we should be very careful Absolutely. the way we live our lives. Absolutely. Not to sell our best trap because of little things and should not, at the same time, be greedy, maybe when the Lord is blessing the other. Amen. Amen. Thank you for, for mm -hmm. you know, pointing that out. Interestingly, do you want to add something to that a little bit? Well, uh, Dr. some Ikele? observation there, okay. too, for me. Is that, you know, when Pastor, you were talking, we said, well, maybe because of little things or little sins. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is any little sin. <laughs> right. Sin is sin. In mm -hmm. the sight of God, because we could see that all through Scripture, right. and I know you don't mean that there is no little sin yes. anyway. But I just want to say that we could see things that might might be of little consequence. Look at look at um, Moses; he didn't enter the land of Canaan yeah. because instead of obeying, God said, "Just speak." He didn't speak. Mm -hmm. He used his hand and he struck. Yeah. Because of that, say, well, you disobeyed me. You are not going to enter the promised land. You will see it from afar that your foot are not going to enter there. Mm -hmm. Look at also all the elders. They were supposed to get in there. They did not see it because of unbelief and other things they did. So right. it, it shows me that we are serving a God that is particular. Absolutely. The ways he sees things is not the way we see, we see it. That's Even right. though, from what you just said and what we all, all also know that, the will of God will always be done Amen. as he wants it. That's right. So we really need to be careful not to say, oh, well, this is, of not, this is really not of a big consequence. Because in the final analysis, you know, we are going to reap some consequences. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Thank you. When I said little mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. I was trying to say that yes. there are things that we can overcome. Mm -hmm. That's true. And uh -huh. uh, you know, you know, um, righteousness is when the least person does what is least expected of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. When a least person, we say this person is least among the people, mm -hmm. but when that least person does what is least, ex least expected of him, that mm -hmm. is righteousness. And which is good. If you, it you is know, something good. But when good, God. but uh -huh. when a big person you expect somebody, maybe a pastor, to do this and then you say, Wow. So even the, even a pastor can do this little thing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the little or the little thing I mean there does not mean that there is mm -hmm. a sin that is smaller. Okay. I mean yes. that mm -hmm. there are small things that we yeah. should not allow. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's just like it's just like um somebody who can buy hundreds of pens, mm -hmm. going to steal one small pen. One pen. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you have allowed a little thing, a mm -hmm. little thing to mm -hmm. deprive you of your integrity. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is, uh, like in my language, the way we say, when somebody is very hungry, say, hey, let me say it. My, it's a, that is, I am so hungry. That is, hunger is killing me. <laughs> Right. And it doesn't mean that he's going to, at that point, die, die. because of that hunger. Right. But it's just a way, it's of, a way expression. of expression. That's right. And because of that, this man forgot him, who he is. Mm -hmm. He forgot himself. He lost his integrity. He lost his, 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 because of food. So, which means that we must be, like you said, very, very careful. You know, because the Bible says, for what can separate us from the love of God? Right. Shall this, shall that, we all know the, the, the passage. So he, hunger, appetite, mm -hmm. a plate of food, sold him out. That's right. So that separated him from his position. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.
Um, so one can safely say with caution here that we really ought to think about the aspect of self-control. Yes. And, and we can only succeed in being um, able to overcome the temptation to really give up your self-control mm -hmm. when you are connected with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, so let's move on, Dr. Kelly. So I'm going to ask you this. Now, it is said that the end justifies the means. Now, we've seen here, obviously, between those two, you know, young men, mm -hmm. and we've identified the types of characters that they, that they were, and in the process, we'll see how one, you know, tries to be smarter, which is Jacob. So, the end justifies the means. Does getting a blessing justify Jacob's deception? Thank you for that question. I would just say flat no. Okay. It doesn't justify it. Because if that were the case in our world today, we can go ahead and kill somebody to justify what, you know, because the person came, uh, you say somebody came to your house, and you are not sure who that person is. And because, you know, you wanted to just protect yourself, you didn't even care to, to cross-check. And you just shoot if you have a gun. Or you, if you have a knife, you kill. Or you just do something. Say, oh, well, I was just trying to protect myself. And you're not sure or who mm -hmm. that person is. They say, okay, it was self-defense, self-protection. That is not right. Now, in this particular case, um, uh, it? he was led into doing what he did because in the first place, I know the issue of Esau selling his birthright, that one has taken place. But in the process of time, his mother, Rebecca, was trying to insinuate and try to sell the idea of what he needs to do to get a position which is not, should not, is not, is not his rightful position. Mm -hmm. And so I would imagine that Rebecca, because of the way, you see, a mother knows how he felt when he carries her, the, ch the child. Right. There are feelings that only a mother can describe. Even if he has like uh, 20 children, there is something different for each child mm -hmm. that she can relate to. So I can imagine that she has a special feeling for this son. You see that he was holding on the older one when they were coming out. Mm -hmm. he must have, she must have had a special position. He, he must have held a, a special position in her heart. And so he tried so much, even um, ways cunningly, to bring him to a position that she thinks he should be. Mm -hmm. And so she, he put all those thoughts in him and even helped him as an accomplice to accomplish mm -hmm. her desire. And the son also, you know, you know, he, he gave in to the mother's idea to get because who knows what they, were, they must have been talking about at home when Esau is gone to... To the bush because the bible said that he dwells in the tent he stays at home most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. so it is very very in my own opinion my thinking very very possible that there are certain things some that he has been gathering information and probably thinking of how am i going to get knowing the jewish culture right how will i get my blessings maybe i will not be able to get the blessings and the woman already knows that the, the younger shall be uh, shall take a position higher than the than uh, that the the older will serve the younger. So she was thinking of how are we going to accomplish this? Mm -hmm. Let me help. I know my 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 husband is old. Very soon he will die, and so I believe that she must have been thinking of ways that he can do this. So in this case, I do not think it is right. The end does not justify this means because if we are children of god and we trust and believe god we have to to leave things 
that should rightly be just, you know, be done by God, to leave it in God's hands. Because in the final analysis, he knows how he's going to bring it to pass. Because he says that in, say, in the end, for God shall bring it to pass. That's right. So it doesn't justify it. Okay. Thank you very much. Ben, Pastor, if you, if you have, you know, any addition um, to, you know, what uh, Dr. Ekele has said already, um, does the end justify... Uh, justifies the means. I mean, does getting the blessing justifies Jacob's deception? Of course, the answer is no, because deception is of the devil, right? Uh, but in this day and age that we are, I mean, people will say, well, who cares? I mean, I, I've, I've got what I want already. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how I, I, I get it, it, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, uh, actually, Dr. Ekele said it well, the answer is no. You know, Jacob being blessed does not justify his means of, you know, getting there. But just like a student who, uh, who does some manipulations in an exam, mm -hmm. and at the end he takes first position. Yeah. Yeah, he has taken test, uh, first position, but then in his heart he knows how he got there. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. The teachers or the markers will mark it and give him first position because he has gotten it. But he knows in himself that, oh, but this is what I did. And his heart will be pricking him. Each time he sees his first position on paper, his mind will remind him how he got and there. He will right. not even have the rest of mind. So I can also add to this by saying that when we talk of spiritual things, the means we justify the end and mm -hmm. not the end that will justify the, the means. means. Though God's grace is there, mm -hmm. we know. So, though God's grace is there, but remember, uh, it's just like um, it's just like Ahab repented. But God said, Though you have repented, but that which I have said, the mm -hmm. punishment must surely come. That's right. Yes. You see, though he repented of that, but mm -hmm. because the mouth of the Lord has spoken, yeah. so you cannot every ill gotten wealth. Yes. Let's, let's talk about wealth now. Every ill-gotten wealth, though God has allowed it to mm -hmm. be, but you must pay the price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must pay the price. That is yeah. true. If the price is death, mm -hmm. you will be successful. You will build mansions. You will mm -hmm. do everything God will allow you. Mm -hmm. But if the price you have to pay is death, you will die that death for that particular thing. So mm -hmm. That's right. It doesn't matter. That is why we should be very, very... Careful. careful but in our world today mm -hmm. people see that see, um, see it as if um, um the means yeah. the, okay. the end yeah. justifies but that is strong in fact to to buttress uh the what you just said we see that in politics today yes we see it in politics mm. people do everything to get to a position we also see it like you mentioned in riches people kill yeah in order to have some quick 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 wealth just a few hours ago, a lady was telling me a very, very woeful situation where a family she knows very well, is, uh, which is, you know, part of her own family, where some people, in order to, to do well in their trade, you know, all this so-called business, they trade, mm -hmm. they buy and sell and buy and sell. This family did some kind of uh, black arts, black magic so that they can get ahead and it did work they were really getting ahead that people were wow they were getting ahead but something disaster struck the person who introduced all that to them that one died then the next person that was very prosperous they said that one died then another one the three died in quick succession mm -hmm. so that trade that was flourishing booming, booming just you know, all of a sudden went downhill. Mm. That is happening even now. So you see, the, 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 the end now is no longer, it's not glorious. That's right. Eventually it crumbled. So that means it's not right. That's so true. So the end does not always justify the means. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. And to mm -hmm. um, our viewers and our listeners, and Pastor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. Um, you know, maybe you could, you could even read Genesis 28, 
you know, verses 10 to 12. And um, while you read that, um, I want us to unpack the dream that Jacob had. So what is really the meaning of Jacob's dream? And how would you feel if you were him, given what you had done? If you can talk to our viewers about it. Okay, yeah. Uh, like you said, it's from Genesis chapter 28, reading from verse 10 through 12. And I would like to read it. It says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to the heaven. And there the angels of God we are ascending and descending on it. Hmm. At this time, that was um, at the point when Jacob was making his vow at Bethel. We know what has happened. Right. Before this time, he is on the run. Mm -hmm. But then, our God is a merciful God. He is. You ask me, if I were Jacob at this time, mm -hmm. how would I feel? Right. Actually, this mm -hmm. dream that God gave to Jacob, God was really trying to show him mercy. Mm -hmm. At the same time, God was introducing Jesus Christ to him. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The ladder there represents Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. That connects Talking us to God. Mm hmm Jesus had said in the book of John, I'll come mm -hmm. back to this, in the book mm -hmm. of John chapter 14, John 14, John 14 verse 6, here is the word of God. Jesus here says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. Uh -huh. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. So here, the ladder was a kind of connection, was a connection. It established um, connectivity right. between this sinful man and God who lives in heaven. Uh -huh. And that is the work of Jesus. Jesus connects us to God. So if I were Jacob at that point, I think I would be very, very happy because in the midst of my sinful nature, mm -hmm. running out of my brother's presence because of what I've committed, and now Jesus says, oh, I'm here to connect you to our Father, means grace, means favor, means mercy, a wonderful blessing. Amen. And um, that is the essence of Jesus Christ, to connect us back to Christ, back to God, even in the midst of our sins. So it now, uh, it's now, it is now in our hands to either accept it or reject it. But in the case of Jacob, he accepted it. Mm -hmm. He accepted the grace. And the same thing will happen to us if we as sinners can accept the grace that is the gift of Jesus Christ. Right. We will also succeed. Amen. So that is, I would say that I would be very, very happy if I had been in Jacob's uh, position and the uh, Jesus comes to me to tell me, oh boy, this is the way. If you follow this way, you are saved. Your problems, your sins are forgiven, your problems are solved and all that, and all that. That is the way I see. So the angels, the Bible said that angels of God we are ascending and then descending, which means there was a thoroughfare. There was no problem, there was no hinge, nothing could have stopped the connectivity, mm -hmm. and nothing could have stopped the flow of the connectivity. So, that is what I will say. Amen. I will be happy. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, anybody will be happy, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Given the fact that this is somebody who had already committed, you know, sin, he had done something wrong, and he was running away, and you see God going after him, right? 
and, and that's very encouraging to, to those of us, you know, who may be watching or listening. Um, when we do something wrong, I think the right approach is not to run away, rather is to run to, to him, the Savior, the Creator, um, so that we would have rest like Jacob found grace, you know, um, in the presence of the Lord. So, Dr. Kelly, I want to go back to you. And, and if you want to, you know, add to what Pastor had said already, you, you, can, you, can, you can do that. I just want to say that that shows how vast, how deep the love of God is. Yes. That's right. What he did for Jacob, he could, have, he could do for any other person who really trusts him and believes him and, and wants to come back to him. God's arm is so wide, his love is so deep Absolutely. that he can accommodate anybody Amen. at any time. Amen. Whether you're a runaway uh, son or you are, uh, you know, you are, you are, you know, whoever you are, God's love is steady, steadfast, you know, unbending, is deep and, and wide. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Well, so back to you. Okay. Um, and, and I want us to, to, you know, really discuss this in depth. <laughs> um, has there been a time when God probably allowed you to experience what you had done, you know, to others or to somebody, right? And how did it really feel? And what did you learn from it? So, I mean, it could be in a positive sense. It could also be in a negative sense. So share your experience. <laughs> That's a very, very, it's a very, okay. I would say it's not a very, very pleasant experience. Okay. I, I, I would just say that when I remember in my final years in college, I was busy chasing several other things. I remember I used to be the... Um, social secretary at the time and that you know i was in charge of uh, going to, to make sure that you know that in the uh, saturday evenings there is saturday evening entertainment relaxation for students and we'll have to see some videos or, or mo it's not we didn't see videos at that time it was uh, we rent uh movies from i used to go to us uh, usics Okay. And I was able to make sure that I do that during the week and we bring it so that students can see and uh, we'll watch something, we'll plan game night and to have entertainment and everybody will be students. Will, you know, being a Seventh-day Adventist institution at that time, the Saturday night is time we can relax and Sunday because the whole of the week we are busy. The whole of Sabbath is relaxation day. So I make sure that we have something to entertain students. And it seems to me that that was like more important to me than my studies. And so I found that in the final analysis, my studies were in heavy, heavy jeopardy. I was not doing well. And when they called my attention to it, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that was me. And so Eventually, my grades were bad at the end. And so I was chasing other things instead of chasing my academics and telling, taking it really serious. And so I found that my grades were bad. Now, I have to deal with other younger people that were also, they were not doing very well. Now, I have to use my NHP. say, see me. I wasn't always an A student. But God so did it for me that in spite of all that he permitted me to scale through, to pass through. And I also found what God did for me. I see in, a, in one person in my family that was joking with his academics. In my larger family, was not doing very well. He's busy with this and that, gratifying the, the needs of other people, this and that. And then he's not doing what he lacked behind. So I saw that that is like me. Okay. That is like me. So I could use my own experience to say, you know what? See this way you are going? That is not the way to go. See me. That happened to me. I don't want what happened 
to, to me happening to you. You are going the same way that I went. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good way. Don't go there. So I could see this in, um, in this family. Uh, Jacob had been a deceiver. Right. Now he see what had happened in his own life being played back in his own very life and his eyes and the children that he had in Isaac, I mean, you know, in Jacob, his son. Right. So um, it looks like they say what goes, what goes around comes around. Comes around. I have experienced that in my own family. And uh -huh. I see that was what going on there. So, but God is always faithful. He permits some of these things to happen so that we can, he permitted that to happen to me so I can use my own experience to correct some other people in my family. Amen. We are going through that. Thank yes. you for sharing mm -hmm. that with yeah. us. And to our mm -hmm. viewers, to give us, you know, more context, as mm -hmm. Dr. Ekele mentioned, Jacob had deceived his brother Esau. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mother continues to find ways and means. Now the Esau is very angry, and it, you know, the plan is to really take him out. And the mother said, you know what? This is what your elder brother is planning against you, and I'm going to send you away on exile. Go to my, my, my brother. And he was sent out. You know, he went to his uncle Laban, and obviously he suffered there also a similar deception. And so <laughs> it doesn't feel good when you taste the taste of your own medicine. Mm -hmm. to, to you, Pastor, oh, yeah. you want to add something to that? <laughs> Yes, yeah, I, I just remembered an experience, and I would <laughs> like to share it. Okay. okay. It's good I shared this experience. Um, I used to say, and it's true, that um, before you become a saint, you would have been a sinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. A saint graduates, graduated from sinful mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. You know, why we say, why it's good we tell people our past experiences is for us to learn. Mm-hmm. When in those days I was in school, you know, I was hustling to pay my school fees. Then I went to a friend of mine. He gave me a book, and I was selling that book for him. So at the time, I told him, oh boy, it's time for me to start selling my own. He said, no, you don't need to do that. Just be selling for me. I said, oh boy, you have to set me free. <laughs> Let me start my own. He said, no. He said, sell for me. For a while, I know when I will set you free. You know, because I was so curious to get the money, I just pulled out, mm -hmm. went and uh, printed the book, and was selling on my own. I was making money. Then at the time, in fact, he was not pleased with that. That would have made us to part ways, but we were so close, we were good friends, even from childhood. Mm -hmm. So, but I was too fast. Then, that business, my own started flourishing, in fact, because I was selling more than him. So okay. I said, well, how can I be serving this boy? Boy, by the way, I am older than him. I forgot the fact that he was the one that introduced me mm -hmm. into that business. Mm -hmm. Right. So the thing was moving. At the time, another young man, Martins by name, came to me and said, oh, please, James, I want to join you in this uh, business. Mm -hmm. Just we can partner, and then whatever the proceed is, I'll give you yours. Then we started. Do you know? I served that boy, that my friend, for like six months. Okay. Martin served me just six months. <laughs> the next thing, boom! I didn't hear. I didn't hear from Martin again. I stopped seeing him. I, I was calling my friend. I said, ah, "Martin, where are you?" <laughs> Martin said, "I am in Ahoda. I am in River State. The next time, I am in Oweri. That is, these are towns in my country. The next time, he told me, "I am in Abuja." Mm. I said, ah, "My friend, where are you? I beg, come and give me my money." <laughs> He said, oh, James, in fact, I have started my own. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I said, what do you mean? He said, I have started my own. I have served you enough. <laughs> now, do you know that I reaped more than I sowed in that? I know, yeah. Do you know why? <laughs> Martin went to Abuja and then added other things also in my name. Mm -hmm. And at the time, he committed a crime. Right. They heard him. The number there was my number. Mm -hmm. The name there was my name. So I received a phone call from one of the police stations in Abuja. They called me and said, oh, we need you. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm in, Ab I am in Abao. They said, but are you James? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. Is this your phone number? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. the, then I said, they asked me, are you aware of social book? 
I said, yes. Are you the author? I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, there is things here that is causing problem. So we, we want to see you. We are giving you 48 hours to report in this police station. Mm. Wow. I had no other option then but to go. fly to Abuja. Oh, wow. So you now see, I had to fly to Abuja. Got there. But the young man that had a problem with Martins, when he saw me, he said, no, this is not the person. Mm. You see, he said, no, this is not the person. But the thing is, my name is there. Right. Everything is there, so I have to pay. Mm -hmm. At least the, pr the price I paid was the money I spent going to Abuja. You know, because that thing took me like one year before the problem was settled. Mm -hmm. He committed that crime on my name and on my head. What happened? Because I did it to my boss. Somebody else I has to, it to do it to me again. Yeah, that's right. So each time I remember that, I would just laugh. I say, oh boy. So I, have, I called my friend Felix and say, oh boy, in fact, I'm sorry. Do you know that that thing I did to you, mm -hmm. that someone has done it to me? <laughs> he laughs and laughs and laughs. <laughs> and that is why we, we must be very, very careful. Yeah, absolutely. What goes around. What goes around, mommy, like you said, comes Come, around. Comes around. Comes you must around. be very, very careful. Mm, somebody absolutely. might pay you in your own coin. It, good. And they right. have discovered that when you are to reap, you reap more than you sow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like if you plant a seed of corn, mm -hmm. you will not reap a seed of corn. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That's right. You now reap a bunch mm -hmm. that has hundreds. That's right. So you reap more than you sow. Absolutely. That is why we must be very careful. Thank you. So Thank Jacob, you. in that case, at least um, he reaped more than he sowed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I could just imagine, you know, mm -hmm. him doing the first seven years. Good. And diligently, and he was hoping, Good. you know, only for him to be deceived. Deceived. And then he had to do another seven years. So, um, like the pastor said, and we all are saying here, we ought to be careful. Um, uh, we, we're wrapping up our discussion for today, and I, and I have, you know, and both of you, you know, would um, make a comment on as we're wrapping this up. Now, in Genesis 31, verse 13, um, maybe, Pastor, I'll ask you to read that for us. Genesis 31, verse 13. Okay, here it says, Genesis 31 verse 13 says, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. Wow. Wow. Well, well in trying to unpack that statement, let us talk to our listeners and our viewers. How could God move past Joseph Jacob's bad record mm. and choose him. Keeping in mind that this is a man that deceived, he manipulated, but we still see how God is going after him. God has shown him grace and he even, you know, went ahead and, 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 and chose him. How could that happen? Any one of you, you know, can, can, can say something to that. I believe that that shows the character of God, a God that never gives, us, gives up on us, on his children. Because his intent is to bring out the best from each of his children. He can use anyone. And uh, we can also see in a lot of biblical characters. Look at David the kind of man that he, he eventually was, he told lies, he committed adultery, and God did not give up. He kept working on him. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, we see, look at uh, even Aaron, with all that he did, when Moses was going to the, you know, he, the God did not kill him then. Mm -hmm. He still allowed him to keep leading his children right. for a time. Look at Miriam. Like it didn't kill her at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So I would say that even today, there is a song that uh, uh, when we were in, 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 in Aswa, in Babcock in those days, the, the junior choir used to sing. And I think they still sing that song today. The song says, he's still working on me. Mm -hmm. He's still working on me to make me just what I ought to be. It's a beautiful song. So 
we are all each a work in progress. That's right. God knows what he will make out of Jacob. That's right. Out of Isaac. That he still kept him, even with all the manipulation and all the connie connie ways. You know, my, my, in my country they say, connie man die, connie man bury him. <laughs> 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 so, I see that in all the story. That's right. So, God is a God of mercy. He is. He's a God of mercy. He, he is. He, even though he knows the, 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 the end, even from the, from the, the beginning. beginning, he still allows us to, otherwise we will not be alive here today. Absolutely. Keeps us going. Absolutely. So still, we are each a work in progress. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for, for sharing that. Mm -hmm. and, and Pastor, to you. Yes, um, I still believe that the song of the psalmist who said the steadfast love of our God mm. never, never ceases. Never ceases. Never so, ceases. you know, God at this point is trying to show us how steadfast he is. Mm -hmm. And um, he has also said that his covenant, he will not break. That's right. God keeps his promises. He does not break his covenant. Mm -hmm. Jacob was um, to God a covenant child. That's right. And we are covenant child. That's right. We yeah. are covenant children, children. of God. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are still here. That's yes. right. When we commit sin, God knows. Mm -hmm. He sees it. Mm -hmm. He's still working after us, mm -hmm. coming after us. We, you know, like a sheep. When a sheep is, is um, straying, mm -hmm. what will the shepherd do? The Go shepherd continues to, you know, as the, the, the sheep, you know, makes advances, the shepherd keeps, you know, fishing and um, running after. So that is exactly what God is doing here. God is still saying to Jacob, do I know who you are, mm -hmm. what you have been doing. Mm -hmm. You are sinful nature. I still love you. That's mm -hmm. right. The same thing he says to us today. And in fact, I want to believe at this point that the Bible said that Jesus is the lamb that was slain, slain. Mm -hmm. at the foundation mm -hmm. of the world. So, you know, that same grace, that same mercy, that same favor, which God has placed on those that will accept him, mm -hmm. was still following Jacob. Mm -hmm. The same thing also follows us today. Amen. That is why we have not perished. That is why we have not died. So God said to him, here, I am the God. Mm -hmm. I am the God of Bethel. That's right. Where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow mm -hmm. to me. Now look at, you know, this man, Jacob, um, Jacob did something. Absolutely. At that point, the Bible said he anointed that pillar. And uh, that, um, that he anointed the pillar means he recognized God at that point. Mm -hmm. So though he was a sinner, but at the time he recognized God. I think there should be a difference between these two sinners. Yes. This one recognizes God, and this other one does not recognize God at all. Though God will be working on these two, mm -hmm. God will be working on these two, these two sinners. Mm -hmm. In the case of Jacob, the Bible said he anointed the pillar, because God said, where you anointed the pillar. Yes. That means where you recognized me. Yes. So, but a situation where a sinner in any way does not recognize God, Oh, uh, Doc, I was telling you something about, um, is it you that I was sharing the experience of um, zero? When in those days, in um, nursery school, we went to school with slates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you score zero, mm -hmm. you know, zero has um, levels. Mm -hmm. There is this zero that the teacher <laughs> that will, out of anger, I. put dots. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the center of your zero. Mm -hmm. yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you discover that what will make you to be so angry is not the zero, the but the dot. The dot mm -hmm. Because that dot means the that this is. zero is not redeemable. Mm -hmm. But there are some zeros that are redeemable. redeemable. Mm -hmm. So a sinner that is redeemable and also a sinner that is not redeemable. So I can see that in this case, Jacob saw himself as a redeemable sinner. Mm -hmm. That at the time he will also recognize mm -hmm. the presence of God in his life. That's right. But this other sinner, mm -mm. like the word of God said in, in Psalm 24, that the sinner, the fool, has said in his heart, there is no God. 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 So, that is what I will... Thank you. 
thank okay. you thank you very much mm -hmm. and to you know wrap up and conclude our discussion for today to our listeners and to our viewers um you know god had promised the messiah this is a covenant that he had made with abraham and now abraham begat a son isaac and we know that through the line of Isaac, the Messiah would come. And so in all of what we are reading, what we are discussing, all of what's going on, God is still behind the scenes. And that is why we see him still pursuing Jacob, in spite of the fact that, you know, he derailed. And that is an encouragement for you and I today. Now, I'm not saying you have the green pass to go out there and continue to sin. But the truth is God wants to save us. And once we acknowledge that, um, you know, the right thing to do is to always come to him, even after we've made mistakes. So with that said, we would wrap it up here for today. And I hope that uh, you have been blessed, you have been encouraged. Until we meet here again, um, we hope and pray that the Lord will continue to be uh, by our side as we sojourn this earth. Pastor, I would ask you to to pray for us as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this program where we have gathered in your name to discuss your word. You've taught us a whole lot of things from the life of Jacob and Esau. And Lord, we ask that your word that sanctifies will sanctify our hearts. Help us, dear Lord, to live our life in a way that pleases you not in a way that pleases us. Help us to live our life that people around us will see our life and then learn things from us that will, through our lives, glorify your name. Even our viewers that will listen to this word, Father, we pray that this word of yours will also sanctify them, sanctify all of us, Help us to be ready, even as we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, your son, that by your grace we all will be ready until then. And uh, on that day when Jesus shall appear in the class of heaven, that we all will say with our mouth, this is our God, this is our Savior. We have waited for him and he has come to save us. May that be our experience because we act in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.